Good evening, I'm Dave Robinson. It is Sunday the 31st of January 2021. This is the next uh, upload of, of a vlog uh, that I've been creating a number of to help support people who um, uh, have got bowel cancer, basically. But tonight's episode is, I just want to take you through um, some of my journey, really, from Crohn's through to uh, having cancer and just sort of taking you on my journey. Now, there's kind of a lot to cover, so I think I'm going to have to break this down into at least a couple of uh, v vlogs uh, for you to uh, be able to take in, in, in the full journey, really. So what I want to do tonight is just take you back to 1999 when uh, this journey began for me. Um, I just set the scene a little bit. I was working for Sainsbury's at the time. Uh, I was in store development, traveling the country, enjoying the job, uh, young family. Um, but I was also doing a degree at the time as well. Sainsbury's had paid for a, an OU course, basically, a retail marketing degree. I was in year five. Uh, final year, dissertation year, project management year, been thoroughly enjoying it. But any of you that have done an OU course, tried to work full time, young family, you'll know how demanding it is. Um, you can't do it without a supportive family. My wife throughout that time was absolutely amazing and fantastic. I could be away for you know a week at a time just studying uh, because we used to go down to a place uh, near Stevenage, I think it was Hitchin sort of way um, and yeah we would uh, basically the lecturers would all come on mass down there and, and teach us for a week and then obviously you know exams and that I'd probably be up in Manchester for a, uh, a few days or a week as well so it was a big big sacrifice I was studying on the days off I was studying during holiday um, but uh, enjoying it so yeah year five um, you know, kind of scoped out what I was going to be doing in terms of my dissertation. I'd met up with some of my colleagues from Sainsbury's to do this project management uh, piece that we we're going to do together. Uh, and then we broke up for, for the summer. And as usual, uh, we as a family, we decided to head off to a place called Biscross. Not sure whether even after all these times that we've been, because we went back about six years on the trot, whether I got pronunciation right. But it's a beautiful place, which is about 50 miles south of Bordeaux on the southwest coast, Atlantic rollers, but this place is set inland a little bit. So it's on a natural, um, it's, well, it's on a, a large lake, which is uh, fresh water, but it's also got um, white sandy beaches as well, gently shelved. It's just brilliant, uh, idyllic. If you ask my girls about it, they've got very happy memories, learnt to ride bikes there, learnt to swim. Um, and yeah, we just had uh, a whale of a time when we were there. Normally went to, for uh, about two weeks, but this particular year, um, we, we uh, well, one of the, somebody at the camp said to me, well, why don't you stay another week? You know, there's plenty of caravans available. Because we were kind of the earlier part of the summer um, before all the, uh, the mayhem starts. And I just approached the courier and said, any chance we can stay on for a week? And he's like, yeah, sure. I said, how much? And he said, don't worry about it. Well, I was strapped for cash at the time. Uh, and uh, I just ended up buying my crate of beer. He was happy as Larry. So yeah, we had lovely three weeks uh, and then uh, headed home. But it was, it was on the way home that I started to suddenly feel rather poorly. Uh, my symptoms were that I got really bad stomach pains. Um, I was feeling sick. In fact, got out of the car a few times to be sick um, and was, was passing wind a lot. Um, uh, and the, the, the journey from Biscross to the port's about 12 hours, so there's a lot of driving. But it just got to a point where my wife said to me, you know what, I'm going to have to take over. She'd never driven abroad before, bless her, but uh, she, she managed. Uh, she drove for a number of miles until I was kind of felt strong enough to, to take over the rest of the journey home. When we got back to the UK and home, uh, I still wasn't very well at all. And although I'd had three weeks off work on holiday, and my wife must have phoned up to say, you know what, he's not 
coming in, he's, he's not well. And that, uh, well, I was off for work for six months in, in, in total um, during this, you know, this time of uh, uh, when it all first kicked off. So from there, I, you know, we were constantly going to the doctors because my symptoms were just getting worse. So the symptoms just developed into, I was just getting constant pain uh, across the chest, across the, I say the chest, it was, it was more the bowel, but that was coming up like reflux into the, like the thorax area. Um, and yeah, it would, it would sometimes come all the way up to the throat. I was getting mouth ulcers. Uh, and I was constantly going to the loo. Um, it was just turned into diarrhea uh, and I was going several times a day. I'd say probably three months in, I'd lost three stone as well. There was blood uh, in, um, in, in my, passing my motions. Uh, uh, I guess, yeah, we were just looking for help from the GP. I was just constantly going back, but he wasn't very supportive. Um, just up for the record, I have the utmost respect for GPs and I would say without a shadow of a doubt, the GPs that I've met over the years have been brilliant, but this guy was not very supportive, bit of a bad egg. He was coming up for retirement and I think he was seeing his time out. I remember my wife and I going and basically pleading with him uh, and my wife said to him, have you ever considered a CT scan? And he's like, he went off on one and swore at her. Um, and yeah, we were a bit disillusioned. And I think we just got to that point where, oh, what else do we do? You know, how, how do we get further support? Um, and I think it may have been even a chat with my parents at the time. They were saying, maybe you need to think about going private. Uh, and they actually helped us out in terms of doing that. So we booked in to see a consultant privately, locally. And he did a, a colonoscopy, uh, which is basically a camera up the bum. And if I seem to recall correctly, he said there was some uh, inflammation there. And uh, yeah, that kind of got the ball rolling. I think that was key to, to things progressing uh, quite well in terms of uh, you know, getting some, some level of traction on all of this. Uh, anyway, I, you know, I was spending my days pretty much in bed or on the sofa in pain with all these symptoms going on. Uh, in the end, I think my, my wife just called the doctors and there was a, there was a lady uh, GP whose name I can't remember, but she was absolutely amazing. She came out, she said, you know what, we just need to get Dave into hospital. Um, so I, I was taken immediately into hospital uh, and uh, that's where I stayed for probably about three or four weeks while they were um, doing checks and then eventually treating me. So during that stay in hospital, uh, which was at the Leicester Glenfield, which at the time specialised in inflammatory disease, uh, uh, inflammatory bowel diseases, they did various tests. So I do remember probably the key test for me was a CT scan which my wife, as I said earlier, had been calling for. Um, I seem to recall it. I had to have a barium meal. Um, now, I hadn't eaten for a good five days and only taken sips of water. That's how bad I'd got. I was on pethidine and all, all, yeah, that sort of painkillers as well. And, uh, oh, yeah, I just wasn't in great shape at the time. But trying to get this barium meal down me just took an absolute age. But... Yeah, they quickly diagnosed from this CT scan that they believe that uh, I had Crohn's disease. So Crohn's basically affects the gastrointestinal tract. Uh, my understanding of it is that it can affect from sort of throat all the way down to the rectum. Uh, and it tends to be ulceration. And you can get polyps as well uh, as part of that. Uh, those, pa those polyps you do have to monitor because some of them are benign, but can turn to cancerous. So anybody that's got Crohn's or IBS or colitis will be subject to um, regular uh, colonoscopies to, to, check the, uh, to check the bowel, um, particularly if you have what we call a flare-up. So a flare-up is where it starts to get ulcerated again and you get some of these symptoms, particularly a lot of pain 
um, around uh, the, the abdominal area. So, yeah, I remember the consultant come in to me and he said, uh, we think you've got Crohn's, um, but we can't tell you how you got it, where you got it. It's, and even to this day, they're still doing research. I don't believe that they currently know um, how, how it uh, gets born within the body, basically. There's a lot of work going on. Uh, we may be a few years away from actually finding a, a, a potential cure for it, but there's some, some good work being done in, in the background. So yeah, you know, he gave me the diagnosis and he says, right, the best way of treating this is, is steroids, uh, IV steroids. Well, probably eight hours in of having this, the transformation was pretty dramatic. Uh, I felt so much better. The pain started to release. And, you know, the big thing for me was my appetite started to return. There I'd been just on sort of sips of water, basically, for a number of days. Um, I probably lost a bit further weight. Uh, and then suddenly, you know, I was sort of dreaming food. Um, my senses were heightened. Um, just uh, everywhere smelt of food. Uh, I was probably in for about another week after that, just while they monitored me and, and got me uh, ship shape to, to go home. Uh, went home and I was just dreaming food all the time. Because you're on steroids, you're very buzzy as well. Uh, I wasn't sleeping uh, an awful lot. So I was coming down at night, raiding the fridge. And very quickly, I think I started to put that weight back on, probably a bit more than I actually lost in the end. You get this moon face with steroids as well. So you, you do fill out quite quickly. But yeah, the transformation was great. Um, so I was on steroids for can't remember how many years, but then also on what I call a maintenance tablet in the background. Don't know if that was azathioprine then, can't remember. And yeah, it took me, it took me quite a while to get back to being fit because my body had absolutely been ravaged by it. So I mentioned earlier, you know, I was off for six months, we were really good, you know, we sort of did a progressive work. Uh, staged uh, return to work so you know I perhaps started off with a few hours a week and then just built it up over time so Saints was really good to me uh, at that time um, and, it, and it, it worked well and I believe that I probably went for a, at least a couple of years without any further incidents really but during the past 20 years you know I have been hospitalized uh, a few times I can't really put my finger on, on one why um, but it does happen. Uh, I think stress, if I'm honest, uh, for any of you that suffer from, from either IBS, colitis or Crohn's, if you think back to the episodes where you've had flare-ups and think about your state of mind and perhaps what some of the things you've been going through, I do think stress um, has a little bit of a bearing on it. I wouldn't say that that's the cause, but it doesn't help. So it's just something to, uh, to be mindful of. So, yeah, as I say, I've been hospitalised a few times uh, during this period. I can't remember how many times, probably uh, maybe three, four tops uh, during that 20 year period. So it's been quite well maintained. But I would say about three years ago, uh, steroids did clearly weren't working for me. And uh, I had a chat with my consultant and he said to me, um, I think we'll try on a new on a new drug. You know, it's it's, it's a new drug. It's a proven drug, but it's a new one to me, uh, called Inflexamed or something like that. And to to have that, you have to go into to hospital. Uh, and for me, it was every eight weeks. I'd probably go in for a couple of hours and have this intravenous uh, drug. It was quite convenient. I could go in at seven, and I'd be finished by about half half nine in the morning. In the end, uh, so you know didn't really interrupt my day and that was working quite well uh, probably I'd say year and a half in something like that I noticed that I was getting my symptoms back after about six weeks so again reviewed with the consultant and we went down to six weekly I think it's also perhaps important to state at this point I was also having prostate problems um, so I'm going to the to the excuse me, going to the loo an awful lot. 
I do recall um, I'd gone out for uh, a mother and father day, I'd gone out to a, to a pub. I was trying to do this sort of, I don't know, once every six months with my girls. Uh, you guys, it's really important to connect with your kids, um, and particularly for me and my daughters. You know, just having uh, some dad time. Uh, it doesn't have to be a meal. It can be just a walk. It's really important. Uh, so I highly recommend that. So yeah, you know, we we'd gone out for the. I think we'd gone out for a walk. Then we went for for this meal, and I remember I, I was just constantly getting up to go to the loo. So in the end, I uh, I I did go and uh, I went to my GP and then went to see a consultant and. I guess the upshot of that was my PSA levels were up slightly, just slightly, uh, but nothing to be too concerned about. Uh, however, I did go in a bit later to have some biopsies done. I believe the biopsies didn't really uh, didn't really prove anything, um, but there was there was yeah my PSA levels were up slightly. They've done some scans as well which I'll come to perhaps on the, the next vlog because um, I think we just need to reflect on those scans uh, because this might be something that uh, um, might be relevant to, to somebody that's listening, listening to this. So I've gone off at a slight tangent, but I just think it's important to put that kind of marker in, in the sand at this point. So yeah, just recapping there, I've gone to this six weekly and it, it seemed to be working well and that continue for probably about another year quite good until I would say around about August September of, uh, of last year 2020 when I started to get my symptoms back again so the symptoms being I was getting uh, waves of pain across the stomach uh, I was constantly passing diarrhea uh, within that there would be blood although not too much in the early early part of those 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 weeks when it started again uh, but yeah I was just getting increasingly uncomfortable and spending a bit more time on the loo than I, I would like um, so I got in touch with uh, the, the irritable burst now irritable bowel nurse team who uh, you know I did discuss the these symptoms with them we, you know, we had a chat and they said look we'll, we'll, we'll have a chat with a consultant and kindly, you know, the consultant got back fairly quick. He said, yeah, I think we need to get you in for another colonoscopy. Now, COVID had kicked in at this time as well, um, because I think I should have had a colonoscopy a little while back, to be honest. It was overdue. Uh, he was good. And he said, look, you know, um, I've got a window. I'm going to get you in as quick as I can. And short to his word, he got me in within a couple of weeks. So my wife and I went, uh, went in for it. And... Um, yeah, well, I think what he was checking for was what the inflammation was like. But they, they tried with the normal scope, couldn't get that in. Tried with a smaller scope, couldn't get that in. And anyway, he, he pulled my wife and I to one side and he said, look, he said, I'm not really liking what I see. So I couldn't really get the scope in. I think there's a stricture uh, in, in the uh, sigmoid area. And it's it looks either precancerous or cancerous so you know, it's, it's not good news at this stage so that was a bit of a bombshell if I'm honest because I, I knew that uh, you know there's always a risk that uh, that the polyps could turn cancerous but because I've gone 20 years I kind of felt invincible I guess um, so yeah we went home with that news um, the colonoscopy had really upset my stomach at that point. I remember phoning my boss and saying, you know what, I, I just don't feel like I can come back to work at the moment. Um, so I just I was just resting up at home. Um, I think, you know, my, my head probably wasn't in, in, the, in a great place at that time, just thinking about what, what the, the consultant had said. Um, and I remember saying to my wife, you know what, this could be long haul here. So can we just take the day out and, and go to our favourite place, which is a place called Holcombe, which is on the Norfolk coast. And just, I just fancy walking the beach. We love it. So we headed over there, uh, walked along the beach to Wells. Beautiful. We saw the sunset murmurings of the, uh, the geese and that. It's just, I don't know, it's just wonderful evening, beautiful sunset. 
uh, and this was back in November. Uh, anyway, we drove home, uh, but on the way home, these waves of pain were just coming over me. Yeah, uh, quite bad. And my wife in the end, she said, you know what? I'm just going to take over the driving, uh, which she did. And she said, uh, actually, in fact, I'm just going to take you to A&E, which bless her, she did. And uh, yeah, we, we spent kind of till the early hours. They did a few scans. Uh, and from those scans, they basically said, look, we're going to transfer you to another hospital down the road. Um, and yeah, there I, I got more pain relief and uh, monitoring. So I just need to recap back a bit here because when I went for my colonoscopy, uh, the consultant said, look, what we need to do is we need to get you in front of uh, the uh, MDT team. That stands for multidisciplinary team. Uh, and what I want to do at this point is I want to talk about the MDT team in my next vlog um, because this is a key point um, because the other point is it's the waiting and I want to talk about the waiting and this MDT team. So I kind of brought you up to this point to, to, to where we're at and I just want to leave it here tonight and just pick up on this in the next couple of days. So I'm going to say good night for now but Please subscribe because that's probably the only way that you'll get notifications. If you think this also might be useful for other people that, uh, you know, perhaps in your family or part of your friendship groups or whatever, and you're thinking, you know, I've got a friend that suffers from IBS or colitis or Crohn, uh, Crohn's or uh, has just uh, actually, you know, been diagnosed with bowel cancer uh, like myself, um, they might find this really helpful. Uh, that's the whole point of these vlogs is just to share my experience and I appreciate that you know we come at this at all at different angles and certainly you know my symptoms might be different to yours my prognosis might be different to yours but I think just talking about this stuff and getting it out there I'm just trying to be open and honest uh, I'm trying not to be too prescriptive in what I say I just want to say it from the heart um, and I'd welcome any comments uh, any feedback that anybody's got you know, on my YouTube channel. I've I've steered away from Instagram at the moment purely because I've never been on it. I don't know whether that's a good platform or not. Uh, I'd love to hook up with the uh, bowelcancer.co.uk as well because they do some fantastic stuff. Uh, highly recommend it. I've, I've mentioned it on some of my other vlogs. There's a, uh, a guy called George Alagaya that's done uh, a number of podcasts with people similar to myself that have talked about their experience I found it extremely helpful and useful so if you know if you've not visited that site already then uh, please do I mean I would love to hook up with them um, probably cancer research as well you know there are a number of things that I would like to do with this uh, in terms of giving it a better platform um, also you know a better understanding of the colostomy bag that you know I've already talked about it, but I want to, again, on another vlog, I want to be a bit more open and honest about that. Uh, talk about some of the practical hints and tips around that, some of the problems that I've had uh, today. It's early days, there's loads of products out there and I'm getting loads of support. So as I said, I'm gonna say good night, God bless, look out for my next vlog. Thanks for listening in.